Hello there, I'm Dr. Nicole Calloway Rankins. I am a board certified OBGYN physician as well as a certified integrative health coach. I do short live videos about once a week on topics to help you related to pregnancy and birth. I also have a free one hour um, mini course on how to make your birth plan as well as a more extensive childbirth education class called the birth preparation course. Okay, so today I am talking about your due date. Now your due date is more than just a way to tell you about when your baby is going to be born. Your due date is actually an absolutely critical piece of your pregnancy. It's something, perhaps the most critical part of your pregnancy. We base all of our management decisions during a pregnancy on how developed a baby is, where the pregnancy is, how, you know, the gestational age, and that is directly related to the due date. So whether a pregnancy is preterm or post-term, um, certain tests need to be done at a specific point in pregnancy, like testing for diabetes, for instance. All of those things are related to your due date. So establishing an accurate due date is absolutely critical. Now, the traditional way that we estimate due date has been to add 280 days to the first day of the last menstrual period or 266 days from the date of conception if that date is known. However, there are several flaws with that method. One, it assumes that every woman has regular menstrual periods that they, like, you know, once a month, that they're all 28 day cycles and that every woman ovulates on the 14th day of her cycle. But that's not the case. Um, women's cycles vary from 28 days and not all women ovulate exactly on the, on day 14 of the cycle. It also presumes that you accurately remember the first day of your last menstrual period. And you may or may not remember that. It may just be kind of a guess. Not every woman keeps exact track of that information. So again, that can lead to inaccuracies. Now, um, so with that being said, it shouldn't surprise you that actually only 4%, yes, 4% of women deliver on their actual due date, just 4%. Part of that is because of the difficulties with estimating due date with the method that I just talked about. But part of that is just plain old biologic variation. Babies are ready to be born when they're born, and that's going to vary a little bit. It's not an exact science. I actually wish we would stop giving a due date and instead maybe give a due week like here's a seven to 10 day window of when your baby will probably be born because that's a more accurate assessment of how things go. Now, the best estimate of the delivery day isn't by that method I just talked about with your last menstrual period. It's actually by ultrasound and an ultrasound done before 22 weeks of pregnancy. Ideally, it should be an ultrasound that's done in the first trimester of pregnancy, so within the first 14 weeks. A measurement of the crown rump length, and that's a measurement from the top of the baby's head on ultrasound to the rump to the bottom. A measurement of the crown rump length in the first trimester is actually the most accurate way to date a pregnancy with ultrasound uh, during any point in pregnancy. It's more accurate than earlier methods like with the gestational set, definitely more accurate than later methods when the baby's bigger. So a crown rump length in the first trimester is the most accurate way to date a pregnancy. Now, once we get that ultrasound due date, what we do is compare it with the due date that we got based on your last menstrual period. So we compare those two due dates and then we come up with a final date. So what we do is we look at your due date based on your last period. And then if you have a first trimester ultrasound, look at that due date. If those due dates differ by seven days, 
then we go by the one from the ultrasound because that's going to be more accurate. Now, if you have a second trimester ultrasound, one that's done between 14 and 22 weeks, then we look at the due date from your period, the due date from the ultrasound. If those dates differ by 10 days, then we go by the ultrasound. The ultrasound is considered more accurate. So again, we get an ultrasound, we look at your last menstrual period, and then we come up with a final date um, comparing those two numbers and how far off they are. Now, here's something that's important and something that I see a lot of women get confused about. Once we come up with a due date, it does not change. So your due date is based on that earliest ultrasound and that is the most accurate so that is what we keep so even if you have an ultrasound done um, at 20 weeks or later in the pregnancy and it gives a slightly different due date your due date is not changing your due date is based on that earliest estimate that earliest ultrasound because that is the most accurate date okay now um there are calculators that you can get, like apps on your phone, to help you calculate your due date and how far along you are in your pregnancy. And those have actually been shown to be more accurate than the old school wheels that we used to use. I tried to look for a pregnancy wheel, but I don't even have one lying around. But they're kind of like wheels. You turn them to find the dates. Those actually are not very accurate. Our, our modern day digital methods are more accurate. However, they're not perfect, so every app isn't the same. So what you want to do is if you have an app on your phone, compare it with what your doctor is giving you so that you know that you're on the same page in terms of how far along you are in your pregnancy and your due date. Okay, now, if you don't have an ultrasound before 22 weeks, then your due date is your pregnancy is considered what's called um, suboptimally dated meaning that we don't have the best estimate or best accurate information about how far along you are and when your due date is. So if you have um, an ultrasound done after 22 weeks, then what we need to do is repeat the ultrasound in three to four weeks, compare the two and see how the baby is growing. If the baby looks like the growth is normal in that time, then we can be more reassured that we have a, a good estimate of the due date. If the baby looks small or big, then we gotta do a little bit more investigation to determine how far along exactly you are. This stuff is not an exact science, so sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure it out. And then last thing I wanna say is if you had assisted reproductive technology, so if you had um, in vitro fertilization, or if you had uh, insemination, um, intrauterine insemination, then you can pretty accurately determine the due date based on um, your, your technique that you had done. Whether it's the date of the egg retrieval, the date of the insemination, there are lots of calculators that can give you a pretty good estimate of when your due date will be. Okay, so just to wrap things up, uh, your due date is really important. It's a critical piece of your pregnancy and something that's important to establish as early as possible. The most accurate method of determining your due date is a first trimester ultrasound using crown rump length. So within the first 14 weeks of pregnancy, measuring that crown rump length is going to be the most accurate assessment of your due date. Once we have your due date, that does not change, okay? Once we establish it early in pregnancy, that's what it is. But, and I keep saying due date because that's what we use, but don't get attached to that specific date, okay? It's not likely that you're going to deliver on your date. Due date, most women don't deliver on their due date. Uh, if, you're, if it's your first baby, you're likely to go past your due date even. So don't get attached to that specific date. Okay, so that is it for due date. If you have any questions and leave them in the comments, I'll answer them there, even if it's during the replay. And I do have to state a quick disclaimer that information is for, uh, this information is for educational purposes only. And if you have specific questions, you need to speak with your, uh, your doctor. 
All right, be sure to like and follow my Facebook page so you don't miss any future videos. And if you want more information about pregnancy and birth, then sign up for my email list. I send emails about once a week, no spam, anything like that. Um, great information to help you during your pregnancy and birth. That link is in the chat box now. Okay, I wish you a healthy, wonderful, and happy pregnancy, and I will see you next time. All right, bye-bye.